Marab Dwalishvili here. There he is. Look at Marab. Wow. Marab, well done, my friend. Unbelievable. Look Thanks. at you. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Marab, what a performance. Like all the pressure, the big moment for your country. You haven't fought in 11 months. You went out there and you beat him at his own game. You were picking up. You made him look easy out there, Marab. What do you think about your performance? What do you think about what you accomplished on Saturday? You know what's crazy? I don't I don't even feel that I was in the fight. You know, I had fun. I had so much fun there. And like all this training, I was preparing this fight. It was hard, of course. Like I was training hard, but uh, and it, everything was hard. Like every day I'm grinding. And uh, and uh, of course, last week always hard weight cut. And there is so many things happened. I was so busy. And then the once I make weight, the fight, the like just the, the you know just time goes quick, and then the fight time came, and I just go there, and I I had just fun. I I don't so before the fight like no nervous nothing. I was just uh, nervous. Why I'm uh, why I wasn't nervous? You know I don't feel any pressure or anything. I I go as you guys see, and uh, I had fun. You know um, maybe and then. Uh, I, I need to wake up like one round first before I uh, start doing my thing. And after I wake up and I, I, sh I show that I, I show, yeah, I just fight. And then, and then when I, uh, when fight's over, I wanted to more, you know, it, it wasn't enough. I don't, I want to fight now. You know, the, the first it was fun. I don't know, but all the respect, Hennis and Hudo is a great fighter, but, um, but now everybody see, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I am, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I am young and hungry and uh, I'm a new generation and uh, it's my time now. Yes, a different level, no doubt about it. And you know, it's interesting, speaking of levels, Rob, last year you beat Piotr Jan, five, nothing, wasn't even close. And then obviously you have the injury and a bit of time off, but you should have gotten the title shot after that fight. And so things happen and it's all good. But even since the last time we spoke to you in December, something has changed, Marab. I mean, your social media, who's in charge? I texted you about this. Who's in charge? Of, where has this been? Because the social media is so good that now people are thinking, wow, this guy is funny. He's different. He's not just, you know, a wrestler who puts his heart out on. Like, we're seeing a different side of you. Even on Thursday, you come with the Mexican flag. You're having fun. It's changed everything. Now where people are really backing you and loving you. How did you come to this conclusion? I need to do this because this isn't the same Marab that we saw last year or the year before that. Something has changed and it's a beautiful thing to watch blossom. And now look, I feel like all these people are behind you because you're allowing us to see this different side of you. That's all me. And I was always like this, you know, like even when I post three years ago when I broke broke the ice with my head, you know, I, I like true. make, <laughs> I like jokes and I like have fun and I like have a laugh and make uh, you know positive energy uh, I don't like drama but uh, so and okay, what happened was you know when I asked UFC I think I deserve tight to fight they said we'll see you know go fight Henry and we will see you know I'm like I mean in my head I already deserve what should I do and I'm like I just maybe push my social media like something like just show my personality and uh uh, I that was just me, like, but you know, the the the, the when Henry screw up my last night, that was of course my it always bothers me. The people always uh, fucks up my name, and I wanna teach Henry <laughs> to show everyone. Just read it, bro. Like you know, if, if Ariel Hawani can read my last name, good. Why you can, you know? But um, uh, so yeah, that was just my idea. Of course, the this like this um, this I still have this here. <laughs> this is like, amazing. This also. This is amazing yeah. what you did there. That was incredible. Yeah, yeah, because these things bother me. Like when I, like, I mean, the first that when our champion called rematch number six guy, of course, this bothers me. Now, you know, I, you know, of course, I, I am, you know, I want to fight for all the titles. I think I'm the next, but and the, when I see that if the challenger wins, and he he wants another rematch, and nobody, everybody ignore me. I'm like, I'm here, guys. What's <laughs> what's up? So. And then that was also my idea. But no, of course, this like a uh, prepper belt and like this fun, like this. That's just that's just like uh, jokes and uh, like uh, simple things. And um, yeah, that you know, like like so like now, um, 
everything is easy now and uh yeah you guys um, will see more more funny videos like this i love it so dana white on saturday said yeah he thinks you're next it's sound it was the most definitive answer that we've gotten to you know your spot in the division do you believe that your next fight will be for the belt yes i believe have you been told this yeah. uh nothing in person but um uh so I see first time Sean Shelby, he was very impressive. He came in the uh, locker room. He said, good, great fight. Like, great fight. Like, like he said, like, look at this crowd was going crazy on you. I'm like, thank you, sir. Thank you. I said, thank you so much for giving me another challenge to show everyone. I, I am the next contender for the title. He said, let's go. And that was it. Uh, is there any chance you're the backup fighter for 299? Are you are you that crazy? I am crazy. <laughs> I am crazy. I will take it. Ha, Did I they offer it. you this? No, they don't offer me. But you know, some um, in press conference, somebody asked Dana, and he said, uh, "Yeah, we'll see." But yeah, like uh, nobody offered me yet. But I will. Uh, I would love to be backup fighter. I'm good. No problem. I don't have. I want to make weight in five days. I can I can just live in my normal life and uh, oh, uh, I will start weight cutting in five days before and I, I'm, I'm, I'll be ready. Who do you prefer wins on the 9th of March, Sean or Cheeto? Which fight do you, do you prefer for the belt? Of course, Sean. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know he's the champion now. He's uh, um, he's very popular uh, in TikTok, and um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to fight. <laughs> did you see him at the fight? Uh, yeah, I did see him. But you know, you know, I also see uh, in uh, like you know when you go back in the stage, I see him, but. Now, like, people talk, oh, go talk to him, chase him. I'm like, bro, why? Like, I'm going to fight next champion, whoever will be. Now he has to chase me. You know, like, I, I never chase, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like to drama. Like, he jumped in when Aljo uh, became champion. And I, I don't like this. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. That time, I don't feel like it. You know, if I feel like it, then I have to, like, make a little drama or face him or something. You know, of course, as a fighter, I respect him. But, yeah, but, and also... I see he was wearing nice white jacket, so, but I like the jacket. Yes, yes. So, you know, you, you posted yeah. something recently, uh, 10 years ago, I think you were working in, in some sort of construction um, when yes. you came. That guy and, and the photos, it's amazing to see you like that. Um, first of all, can you tell me about what you were doing? And, and number two, that guy, would he have ever believed that all this would happen to you eventually? You're about to fight for a UFC title. Fans love you around the world. Your country loves you. You're, you're a huge star over there. You're becoming a huge star here. Would that guy have believed that it would have turned out like this? That guy, that time, no. I was I was mentally down, crushed, because I, I, you know, before when I came, and when I came, begins, I, I have hope. Then I will, I will work hard, and I will do everything for it. And... Uh, you know, I was believing myself. I, I I was thinking too. I can I can do it. I can make the UFC and I can be a like, top ten fighter. But the and then the, all my hopes gone in one year. And I was just construction worker. I I almost quit. You know, I quit a couple of times in you know, MMA because wasn't wasn't make sense. I cannot even find the MMA gym. Uh, I don't even have a training partners. Um, I, I cannot even get MMA fights here. I was training better in Georgia and the US, and uh, and uh, so many other problems. And um, and I was by myself uh, without English, uh, but I was happy. That at least I have a job, and uh, I can be just free. I can make my own money and support my. Uh, friends or family or just being feel like a man you know I, at least i have a job then but after like one year in hell like lots of things change i find that my team said a longo i start training there 
and uh, my hopes came back. But uh, 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 after I was working all day construction, I was uh, uh, like a demolition guy beginning and uh, it was so tiring i was training after i guess it wasn't enough and i lost my official pro debut i have 10 fights in georgia which it doesn't count so like uh, i had like my my friends who fought same night they have uh, these fights and professional you know uh record but i don't have it somehow uh, and uh, so I lost my pro debut and I kind of like a little bit like I start thinking about, oh, this MMA, should I still chase or no? And then I win next and they give me short notice and I got sick and I lost and then I lost my hope. I'm like, I'm now one and two. I will never make UFC. Uh, after hard work, I'm going training hard. I don't have time. Uh, like it's so cold in New York. I was outside working all day and then going gym, and it was so painful, you know. And uh, I, and uh, it was so hard. Like and then uh, that that time I was thinking whole world was against me. Like you know, and I started fixing my immigration papers, and the lawyer lied to me and uh, uh, everything was going other directions and uh, but thank god i was able to uh, patient uh, still continue work and uh, uh, and uh, uh, I, my hopes came back i, I take a little a long break and uh, i came back for i was thinking i don't care if i even make ufc or no I just want to fight. I love fight. I don't want no, no excuses. And um, win or lose, I got to do what I love. Because when I wasn't fighting, I was thinking, oh, maybe I will enjoy like everybody else, going club, going to restaurants, date some girls. But I was doing a little before all of that, but I wasn't happy. And I realized I miss fighting. I miss MMA even. I have to spend money for the fight. Even, even I have to, I was working all day, like working out, lifting heavy weights or running with the garbage and uh, climb to the roof and jump to the ladder and uh, risking my life. And then after that, I was, I had to go work. Or I had to just training. It was uh, very hard, but thank God I did that. And now I changed my life. And it gives motivation to so many young generations. Did you and see now? Here we are. It's amazing. Uh, did you see this video? We showed it at the beginning of the show, and, and perhaps we could show it to you as well. I'm sure you've seen it. Back home in Georgia, all the people outside, early morning, singing the national anthem before you fought, the scenes when you won, sure. the scenes when Ilya won. When you see that, how does that make you feel? Of course, happy. And Georgia was always... Uh, support me and i want to tell them i love you guys so much you guys are the my one of the big motivation and i will do always my best for make you proud and uh, represent our country and uh, show kids good uh, good example how to be just 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 be normal normal citizen you know good citizen <laughs> Ilya got it done. Uh, I'm sure that I saw your post about him. Pretty incredible, right? That by the end of this year, there could conceivably be two champions from Georgia. Yes, uh, this is a really, really big moment for the country, Georgia. And I'm so happy for my brother. He's really working hard and uh, he, he deserved everything. Like you guys remember, he was saying, it's it's not cockiness or it's not like uh um he's not like uh he's, he he was working hard and he believed his work and he's just kind of, he was just confident and uh, now everybody saw like how how it is everything is true by the way uh earlier today i saw a clip where um your coach ray longo is on the anakin florian podcast and he said that you and aljo you fought like a three round fight in the locker room before the fight, like you went the full 15 minutes, like full blast with Aljo. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that common? 
that's how we warming up. You know, I like to warm up uh, good. Uh, but yeah, we we are best friends, training partners, and uh, we 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 beat each other and make uh, um, better each other, and uh, and then we are ready for uh, anybody else. What was tougher, the uh, the battle with Aljo in the locker room or the Henry fight? I think a battle with Aljo. <laughs> <laughs> Marab, you picked up you picked up an Olympic gold medalist and you carried him across the other side of the cage. I mean, that was nuts. Did you really do that just to talk to Mark Zuckerberg, or did he just happen to be yeah. there? <laughs> yeah, I had too much fun there. You know, uh, actually, uh, uh, me and me and Mark, we've been uh, friends Instagram uh, um, last couple of months or maybe one year, and then we, we just we 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 we've been texting each other positive energy, and uh, like good text, and uh, so yeah. And when I saw him there, of course I was excited. I I say hello to him, and uh, when I was fighting, he was my fourth corner. He was he was giving me some tears. The one time I remember, he called me thirty seconds left, and I <laughs> looked at him. Thank you. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was cheating a little bit because I have fourth corner that night, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, when I shoot Henry and I know I got him, I'm like, now I, I want to lift him. I want to make, I want to have a fun with him. And then when I lift, I'm like, where is Mark? And I start to look. Oh, I, I see him, and I'm like, ah, it's gonna... <laughs> <laughs> and I throw a photo of him. Yeah, just. Did Henry say anything to you after the fight? Yeah, we did met him, and he told me go get a title. You know, you got this, and you can win this. And uh, and he told me he was really surprised my face um, and uh, my. He told me some words I can like because I guess uh, he was saying like how I'm. In, in, I mean, I'm like uh, it's hard to read me. You know, like it's when one thing is when you see me from. Uh, Far like he, when I'm fighting, maybe I don't look like a uh, like a maybe a strong fighter or something. I don't know. But when you're fighting me, you you will feel like that I'm I'm different. He said before the fight, if he loses, he'd retire. It seemed like he was leaning that way after, but he didn't get the microphone. And Dana White said at the press conference, like he retired once. That wasn't his moment. That was your moment. He could do that on his own time. Do you think he should have had a moment in the cage? Um, uh, yeah, usually, uh, usually, like the fights like this, you know, if it's not main event, uh, usually they don't give you microphones, uh, and uh, uh, so, and especially after loss, and I understand, you know. Um, okay. But uh, I don't know. Do you think he will retire? Do you think he should retire? Um, no, he's a good fighter. I will never tell somebody to retire because we love this sport. Like I said, I when I was um, when when I quit, I uh, I'm like, why are you doing this? I'm not making money. I actually spend money for training, and uh, I'm, I'm 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 I don't have time for even sleep or for even eat or I just maybe after get freezing work and I come home just stay in warm house while I'm going I have to go training go outside again and, and then, anyway so what I'm saying is I when I started fighting again because I, I love it and I was willing to do without money and I actually I was actually make money from construction like and then just spend money to me to travel or pay for the athletic commission or whatever it was, you know, and to just fight, you know, because I love it. So now this level, when you when when you are UFC fighter and then you you can win or lose, you can still come and uh, do your thing. Uh, you gotta keep fighting as long as you want. You know, this is my choice, and uh, I think uh, you should be able to do whatever you want to do. By the way, how's your hand after the fight? Very good. Very okay. good. No problem. That's good. 
Uh, I'm happy. I was a little bit worried about that, so I'm happy to hear that. And by the way, what about the Mexican fans adopting you as one of their own? The the comments were hilarious. The like the people writing your name with a bit of a twist on it. Were you expecting that kind of response when you did that with the flag? Of course, I wasn't accepting <laughs> that kind of response. So. But uh, yeah, thank you, my Mexican friends. Uh, we were Mexico, <laughs> and uh, uh, so oh, my thing was, you know, I, I'm from Georgia, and uh, uh, you know, I, you know, like I, we all know you, you, you from Canada. You always uh, proud of mention that, and uh, and uh, I respect you because you are a good man or a good journalist and represent your country. It's it's only good for you and good you know why not be just professional and represent your country where you from you know but yeah somehow Henry wasn't doing that and uh, that's why I decided to him my 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 personal opinion um, yeah he he should uh, he should be proud to be Mexican you know because. Uh, uh, the, to be Mexican, only Mexicans can be can say that we are Mexicans. They're really strong people, uh, very hard workers. Uh, I have so many friends, and I've been in Mexico, and of course, all only respect and love this country, and uh, um, so that's why I did this. You know, <laughs> I I bring Mexican flag. You know, but I, of course, I wasn't um, uh, I wasn't trying to um, uh, to like um uh, like you you mentioned i wasn't trying to think that that, that no that it was great attention, but yeah the response was hilarious uh last thing for you marab in a perfect world when would you like to fight again obviously the title fight has to happen next month when are you th- and and you know there's going to be a few months after that but what are you feeling what are you thinking i'm ready next month but if i will be re- realistic I guess uh, whenever the UFC decides to have the next title fight, of course I will be ready. But I want to fight as soon as possible. Um, I'm I'm young. I'm hungry. Um, I love fighting. You know now injury free, and I'm I, I am a gym every day, and uh, uh, I don't have uh, uh, more important in my life other than fighting. So. This is number one, my job, and I uh, I would love to be busy, but I understand like it's now, now I'm official fighting for the title, and I have to wait. Right, and then and then if all goes well in that fight, then you do the first defense against Frankie Science, right? <laughs> Never. <laughs> I mean, I wish, but I'm not like. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna call my rematch. I will call number one um, contender, whoever will be next. Congratulations, Marab. Very happy for you. Long time coming. Uh, well deserved. Well earned. Well done. Really, well done. It was an amazing performance, and I'm so happy for you that you're finally gonna get this shot and that you're getting the love that you deserve as well. I remember many, many moons ago, Ally Quinta always saying, "Marab, you gotta know this guy. You gotta talk to this guy. He's the guy. He's the next uh, guy to come from the gym." And and he was right. And he wasn't the only one from the gym, but Al in particular would always talk about you. So I'm very happy for you guys. Ariel, thank you so much for your support. So always, always giving me your time and this opportunity to spoke to uh, the MMA fans. And of course, thank all my teammates and especially because Ali Quinta is a very great guy, as you know. And uh, yeah, I want to tell everyone, thank you guys for support. Uh, I love you. And uh, you guys see many, many fights. Uh, like my, I'm gonna show you many. I mean, I'm here. I'm not yes. going anywhere. I'm yes. only getting better. So. I love See it. You guys soon. Thank you, Marab. Congrats. Thank there you. he is. Thank you. The pride of Georgia, the pride of the United States, the pride of Mexico. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.